seems to be a bit of confusion about backlash. Um, so we, I needed to visualise it. So here we set up on my lathe. Um, I've got the cross slide here and I've got a DTI which you can't see is out of shot. Um, but it's just resting on the tool post here so that it takes a reading. Whenever the cross slide moves um, you'll get a reading on the DTI. So what we'll do is we'll wind the DTI to zero. That's on zero. Um, you're going to have to struggle, I think, to see some of these, so you might have to take my word for it. But I'm going to wind now my little indicator on my screw back round to zero. So we're both now zeroed in. Now I'm going to wind it in the opposite direction to the direction that I just moved it. You'll see this move, but I want you to pay particular attention to the DTI. So I'm going to start turning. Turning, I'm 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 turning, and now the DTI is moving. And in fact, we can go back the opposite way. I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, I'm turning, and there it's now picked up and it's caught and it's moved the cross slide. And that's backlash. Obviously, that's problematic because I can be turning in this direction, moving the cutter in, and then the next cut needs to be half a millimetre let's say back in this direction and if I just zero my clock that I've got on the screw if I zero that in and I then turn that back by the appropriate amount then I won't have taken into account that backlash we can actually measure the backlash so there we are back on zero back on zero on the screw, turn it in the other direction until there we are, the DTI starts to move. And on this, forgive, it's in Imperial, but this has moved 16 thousandths of an inch before the actual tool post has been able to move. That's a significant amount of movement. And if I relied purely upon the gauge that I've got here on my screw, Every time I move, I'm going to have 16 thousandths of an inch in accuracy building up on my job. Same when I move forward, it'll move 16 thousandths of an inch before it picks up and then starts to move again. To overcome it, what we need to do is we've been moving forwards, we've been taking cuts. Now, I need to move back by this amount. So, let's say I'm here, you, might, you won't be able to see that, I'm at 20 thousandths on my gauge. I need to move backwards back to zero. If I move backwards to zero, my tool post has moved actually four thousandths of an inch. So instead, from my 20 position, what I will do is I will turn one full revolution. Doesn't matter too much, don't be too accurate, back to the 20. And what that's done is that's absorbed all that backlash into that last movement. Then I'll move it forward again Rather than going back to the 20, I'll go to the new position that I want, which is zero. And because I've moved backwards and absorbed all of the backlash that I had in that direction, and then moved forward again, that whole revolution, and that's absorbed all the backlash in the opposite direction. When I come back to my new dimension, zero here, I'll be spot on. That's eliminating the backlash from, well, virtually any machine control that you might come across. So what goes on in Backlash? You have a piece of threaded bar, and we have a nut cut in half, um, so you can see what's going on with the teeth. Now, in order for the nut to be able to move, these can't be a tight fit. The nut's got to be able to move freely along the threads, so we need to have clearance, i.e. a gap between the teeth. And that gap between the teeth you can see here, as I rock the half nut, you can see there's definitely movement between the two. When we move the cross slide, which is attached to the nut in one direction, the nut loads up on one side. The teeth are fully engaged on one side, but you might just be able to make out a small gap on the other side. When we then stop and turn backwards, the nut now has to move from engagement on this side of the tooth to engagement on this side of the tooth. And that will require 
the equivalent of the clearance between the two teeth to be taken up by the screw. That's what generates your backlash within the machine. But that's backlash. It's a problem which is universal on nearly every machine, but it's easy to overcome. Turn the handle back one way, one full revolution, then turn it forwards until you meet the new dimension and you will have absorbed all of the backlash and there will be no more problems.